Now up to this point, the only thing I've seen out of old Trevor is him making an absolute fool of himself. As for Coleo Noir, dude's gun reviews are the truth. And on top of him being a firearms activist, he's also an attorney. So this should be interesting. So I came across this video from Trevor Noah basically engaging in a soliloquy of sorts um, about his thoughts on the gun conversation and the gun debate in America. So I figured I'd give my own responses to the points he makes in the video because I think they need to be said. So let's dive right in. Everything else America believes is possible. Oh boy. We're like, oh, we're gonna go to the moon, we're gonna go to Mars. Oh, we're gonna cure cancer. We go, oh, it doesn't mean we can't do it. We can do it, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. We're gonna... Then when it comes to guns, all of a sudden, so many people are like, it's impossible to stop it. You just, you can't. There's so many. Oh, what are you going to do? No, it's not that Americans think it's impossible to stop. It's that we don't believe making people helpless and unable to defend themselves is the way to do it. You're rich. You can hire private security to follow you around for 24 hours, seven days a week. That Most all Americans don't have that privilege. So we own handguns, shotguns, and AR-15s to protect our families from criminals and our country from tyrannical governments. You may not like that, yet here you are in America making millions by giving us Amen. backhanded compliments and then trying to shame us because we won't bow down to daddy government and say, <laughs> please take our guns away from us and protect us. The irony. People try and make it a game right. of whack-a-mole when it comes to solving problems. You know, you propose any type of solution and they go, well, that wouldn't have solved this one. This wouldn't have stopped that. And you're like, yeah, but that's, that's not how solutions work. Right? There is no problem that is going to be solved by one solution. A lot of the time, big problems require a multitude of solutions. And what you do is you try and fix it incrementally, step by step. Trevor, your only solution is to further restrict the constitutional right. We aren't playing whack-a-mole. We're playing Dungeons and Dragons, trying to defend the castle that is our two-way rights that you and your mainstream media cohorts keep trying to siege upon at every opportunity. You're not incrementally trying to solve a problem. You're incrementally trying to ban guns. More people are killed with handguns and rifles. If you're willing to ban rifles, why wouldn't the next incremental step be to ban handguns? We're not stupid. And look at cars, for instance. Cars is a simple People don't idea. think about that, though. Right? When they started off, it was like a bucket with wooden wheels. You just crashed and you died. <laughs> that was it. And then over time, people said, well, why don't we improve it? Why don't we say it has to have brakes? Well, we never thought of brakes. <laughs> let's add that. Let's add brakes and let's add this and let's add seat belts. We've gotten to the point where cars drive themselves now. And still we say, we've got to write laws. We still say, let's make sure that a self-driving car adheres to certain standards. Let's make sure that it hasn't stopped. And yet somehow with guns, it just stopped. You know, it's such, it's such a strange argument for me. Oh, but that wouldn't have fixed it. Yeah, but if you see a loophole, why not fix it before it leads to a problem that it could have stopped. Oh my goodness, it absolutely amazes me that people are smart enough, intelligent enough to know that criminals break laws. There's bad in this world, we acknowledge that, but not smart enough to comprehend that no matter how many laws you lay out, no how many matter of them that you put in place, criminals are still going to break those laws. It just absolutely makes no sense to me and it baffles my mind that people think that, oh, because we put this gun law in place, because we take these people's guns, that those people over there that don't follow the laws and the rules anyways, now they're gonna start obeying. Now they're gonna get in line and, and straighten their lives out. It's not gonna happen. What, what's not adding up, man? Just leave our firearms alone at the end of the day. Leave mine alone. You can have all the protection you want, let me have the same thing. Let me have that same right. Second Amendment, that 2A, we got to protect that thing at all costs. Leave us alone. The problem with the car analogy is that when a drunk driver kills someone with their car, we don't try to ban cars. When people kill people because they were street racing, we don't try to ban sports cars. When a self-driving car kills someone, we, we don't try person. to ban self-driving cars. However, because some mass shooters have used AR-15s, you want to ban AR-15s. Guns have improved in safety the same way cars have. They're more reliable and they have better safety features. Everything we did nice. to make driving safe focused on improving the safety of the item and education. Everything you want to do to make gun ownership safer focuses on restricting guns. I always say the same thing. Not oh, the people. Not. Slow. Which guns on, do now. you ban? You know, like which guns do you want to ban? It's like, well, just start with the ones that people seem to be using over and over again to go into schools to kill a bunch of children at one time. Oh, but that won't, what if they come with it? Yeah, then we'll deal with that. You know, it's a lot harder to commit these mass shootings when you don't have certain types of weapons. I told you, they wanna ban guns incrementally. It doesn't take a genius to see that his argument makes no logical sense. It's a known fact. 
that handguns are the most common weapon type used in mass shootings in the United States, with a total of 146 different handguns being used in 98 incidents between 1982 and June 2022. These figures are calculated from a total of 129 reported cases over this period, meaning handguns are involved in about 76% of mass shootings. Yet Trevor says we should ban the guns used most in these types of shootings. Those are handguns, but you're talking about banning AR-15s and then telling us we'll deal with the rest later. That means you're arguing from pure ignorance and that you don't know the data, or you're arguing from pure emotion because AR-15s scare you, or you're doing exactly what I know you're doing. You're being deceptive in that you know it's easier to go after AR-15s now, only to come after handguns and that. The yeah. most deadly school shooting in U.S. history was Virginia Tech. The shooter killed 33 people with handguns. You want to tell me again about how having certain guns that make it easier to kill a bunch of people need to be banned? People are like, oh, it wouldn't fix it. Yeah, nothing fixes everything. But you got to start. You got to start somewhere. Lower health. They almost use like the gym, the gym argument. That's what it is. You know, when you're trying to get in shape. <laughs> it's because why don't you go out? Nah, I'm just not gonna change anything. Nah, push-ups don't help. Yeah, push-ups on their own don't help. And, you know, walking on its own, do its own doesn't help. Drinking more water on its own doesn't help. You combine these things step by step, day by day. And then you wake <laughs> up one day and you're like, well, not the well, same, I look a little bit better than I did not before. I feel a little bit better than I did before. It's not going to happen overnight. It's incremental. But it's really interesting that it's the one area where so many people just want to throw their hands up. Trevor, you talk as if we don't have any gun laws in this country. We have over 300 federal gun laws and thousands of gun laws on a state and local level. What do you mean we need to start somewhere? The first piece of national gun control legislation was passed on June 26, 1934 with the National Firearm Act. We started over 80 years ago. You know what's ironic about Trevor's gym analogy though? The one thing he didn't mention was diet. Anyone who knows anything about losing weight knows you can't outwork a bad diet. Starts yes, with what you eat. more gun control, i.e. lifting weights, makes you feel safer. But <laughs> if you don't deal with the root cause, i.e. your bad diet, nothing is going to change. As a matter of fact, it'll probably get worse. The same people, by the way, where when they first were told that this was an undocumented immigrant, they were quick. Yeah, they were, all of a sudden they were like, oh, we, we gotta do, we gotta shut down the borders. We've got, this is why we need stricter, go, go. and then they were like, what? Oh no, it was, it's not what we, look, this is not the time to politicize things. Uh, Y'all see my man walking by, could have been a director, a, a, a film crew member, whatever. He had the mask on Trevor. You know, I bet you don't see Trevor wearing a mask. I'm just saying it's hypocritical. Just like you won't see Trevor without armed security. He might even own a firearm himself. Him, him, his woman, his man, or whoever, I don't know his, his life, his, his day to day, but I guarantee the same way he's not wearing a mask and his, his crew is wearing masks, I guarantee this, this message he's portraying about, oh, guns are bad, this, this, that, and the third, but he'll be the first one to get duck behind a gun when somebody tries to attack him or just to feel safe on a day-to-day -day basis. Hypocritical. We don't know what could have been done, and we... There's nothing that could have been done, and we got to realize that bad people are going to do bad things. Oh, but when you thought it was somebody who came across the border illegally, then you, you said there was something you could do. Ooh, yeah, well, that, that, yeah, yeah. He's not lying. There were indeed pro-gun people who did this, but let's not act like the AR-15s are to you what certain immigrants are to the people you were just describing. Y'all both do the same shit. Once you hear about a mass shooting, you start screaming about assault weapon bans until you find out they use the handgun and then, oh, you get real quiet or you just ignore it all together. But here's the big difference. Foreigners don't have a constitutional right to enter the U.S., but citizens of the U.S. have a constitutional right to keep and bear arms. So you're the only one making an argument to infringe on a constitutional right, which requires an exceedingly higher standard than, let's just try it and see if it works. And the saddest thing is it's a small group of people. Most Americans are on the same page. It's like a small group of people who've managed to shift the Overton window on the conversation around guns. Most really? gun owners no. are logical about this. Like, gun, like real gun owners go to the range and they shoot. The, you should see how they respect weapons, you know? They'll even be the ones who go like, yeah, maybe we get rid of some of these guns and maybe we change some of those laws and whatever. But then there's this small little group, this lobby that manages to shift the entire conversation in the country. And you can't do it. Now, how in the world does Trevor know what most gun owners think? Most gun owners that I know believe in the actual two-way, the actual Second Amendment, shall not infringe. If you want the whole thing, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the secretary of a free state, the right of the people to keep 
and bear arms shall not be infringed. To keep and bear arms, to be able to defend yourself, to be able to own that rifle, to be able to own that handgun, if evil ever so does come knocking and the Lord is with you, you're able to defend the people you love, defend yourself, and go about your day-to-day your -day living with a more peaceful mindset because evil is always lurking. People are always going to find a way to do bad things. If it's not a gun, they're going to find a way to kill you with a knife. They'll find a way to kill you with a with a dishpan. They'll find a way to kill you with bow and arrow. It's been happening for generations to generations. People always find a way to do bad. It's not the law-abiding citizens, the non-convicted felons going into these gun stores, going on to gun broker, trying to get firearms in their hands. They're going about it in a legal process, and they're always going to find a way to do that. And if you take guns out of law-abiding law -abiding innocent people's hands, they're not going to have a way to fight for themselves and to fight for the people that that they care about it just it's common sense but people on the middle that don't know left from right that aren't able to think for themselves or aren't allowed to think for themselves because people like Trevor Noah are always on display always on the mainstream feeding you this false narrative this all this rhetoric without actual facts and without logic it, it's, it's not fair to these people and we should be preaching the fact that it's it, all this crime that's going on the mass shootings the the black on black crime the the all the the chaos that is unleashed in the world it's a mental health crisis it's a fatherless home crisis it's not a gun issue. Guns don't just hop up out of the holster, hop out of your nightstand, hop into some evil criminal's hands and start popping off. It's the person behind the gun that pulls the trigger. Just think about it. Trevor, stop patronizing gun owners and people in the middle. <laughs> if the majority of gun owners agreed with you, you wouldn't be making this video. You only say this as a shaming tactic to the people who aren't gun owners but are in the middle on this issue. They are the ones who really have the power in this conversation. You're trying to get them to feel like, well, if the majority of gun owners agree with Trevor, then maybe I should too. If anything, this shows that you have very little respect for the people in the middle and their ability to think for themselves. I think it's safe to say I know way more real gun owners than you and Amen. none of I bet them you do. agree with banning AR-15s or any of your proposed gun control measures. None of my friends so stop do. lying. Someone said to Just me uh, recently about this conversation. He's like, why do we bother? It's like, why do we keep having this conversation? I was like, hey man, I don't know. Why did Martin Luther King Jr. bother? You know, why did Nelson Mandela bother? Why did Mahatma oh, Gandhi bother? Why did Harriet goodness. Tubman bother? Why, you know, it's like, the, you have to keep bothering. That's what hope is. You just wake up and you try again and you try again and you try again and you try again and then you know, one day you succeed or you die of old age. Trevor, Martin Luther King fought for civil rights. Amen. Nelson Mandela fought for civil rights. Gandhi fought for civil rights. Harriet Tubman used a gun to fight for civil rights. You, my friend, are doing the opposite. Yeah. Because the Second Amendment it's is a civil to, right. To take you just right. spent the last four minutes fighting to restrict it. I love his insight and we're going to talk about it. Don't you love how these non-gun owners, they always say get rid of these guns as if criminals don't have them or aren't going to find a way to get them. And I think what they're really saying is I'm scared and want someone else to make me feel safe. In Trevor Noah's case, I don't know if he's a gun owner or not, but I guarantee he has armed security. I guarantee people at his network make sure he's guarded at all times. So while he's telling you this message about, oh, you shouldn't own a gun, you don't need a rifle, you don't need a handgun, guns are bad, they do evil things. He's got guns all around him. He's got guns keeping his, his livelihood and all that. That salary that he's, he's been allowed to stack up, Lord willing, he's allowed to be protected. But, but you can't be protected. I can't be protected. Come on now. The hypocrisy is real. And if you've been around for a while and you know how my videos roll, then you know I got to show love to my Bible thumpers out there. Basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible, how I base everything in my life. This is the foundation. This is the rock that guides me because I didn't get raised in the good book. I didn't get raised with a father in the home. So I had to find my own way and thank God for blessing me with my wife, getting me on the right path. And the Lord has forgiven me and he's forgiven you. Jesus took on the cross. So it's never too late to turn to him. But I got to take it to, to scripture in regards to self-defense and, and guns and weapons and things of that nature. John 18 verse 10, it says, then Simon Peter, one of the disciples, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Actually, he said, put your sword into its sheath. You know, if I could pronounce English, it'd be a beautiful thing. But back then, swords were their weapon of choice. That was their option of self-defense. 2,000 years later, guns, firearms, whatever you want to label them as, that's how we defend ourselves. That's why we have the Second Amendment. That's why God allowed for the Second Amendment to be put in place and for that law to be protected over time. So don't let people snatch that away from you. Yes, Jesus said, put your sword back into its sheath, but he didn't disown him. He didn't not allow him to have a sword. He just said simply that, hey, 
you, you did your damage, you did what you had to do, put it back in its sheath. You may view that a different way. You may be one of those pacifist sort, sort of people that, you know, whatever evil comes knocking, you're going to pray right there and you're going to hope and, and put it all in God's hands that, you know, that he, he takes care of you, that they wash that evil away. And I'm not knocking you. That's cool. But if I have to face judgment someday, which we all will, when revelation, when revelation hits and I got to face that judgment, whether I get into heaven or whether it gets toasty, I think I, I, I would like my chances as, as though if somebody broke into my home and I shot them in the head or shot them wherever to defend my family, to keep them well and safe, I'd like to take my chances on it, whether uh, if I make it or not. But you may disagree and that's perfectly okay. But that's just me. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord and we'll protect the people that we love. I want to hear your thoughts. Comment them down below. Let's try to keep it civil. Remember, you can disagree with my opinion and being here in America, especially we have freedom of speech. So we can have civil discourse, respect each other. Even if we disagree on this, we disagree with our relationship with God or whatever your religion may be, uh, we can still be friends and, and move forward and progress in society. That's what it's all about. Discussion on both sides, adult big boy discussions without bashing, belittling, and, and chopping people's neck off and keyboard thugging in the comments section. At the end of the day, you can have an opinion, I can have an opinion, and we can still have proper conversation. That's what it comes down to. But if you rock with these sort of videos, if you rock with my opinion, you don't rock with it, either way, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all my videos. Share this video for Coleon and for, you know, just to keep this conversation going for the algorithm to support your boy. It helps a lot. I appreciate you. Whether you agree or disagree with my take on it. If you want to take it a step further and support my channel, tap that heart which says thanks next to it. It supports the channel. You can join the Patreon fam. You can always buy me a coffee. Link down below as well or PayPal. Everything is linked in the description. Products I use, this chair, office gear, everything that I get behind and people that support me, it's always linked down below. But outside of that, I love y'all. I'm going to be praying for you. Until next time, Godspeed. I'm gone.